Hey, welcome back to After the Episode, brought to you by Line Cutters, the adjustable ring that cuts fish in line. Well, welcome to, what is this? I don't even know what this is. Well, we're going to do a catch and cook with our After the Episode combined. Kill two birds with one stone. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. Well, let's get after it. What are we cooking? We're cooking red snapper. Red snapper? Yes. Where do we get the red snapper from? Offshore. Grand Isle, Louisiana. With who? Captain Kenny. All right, let's get after it. What? So I've taken out the red snapper, cleaned it up, got the bloodline out of it. Um, we're going to use all those ingredients you see there. The Parmesan cheese, Worcestershire, some breadcrumbs. We're going to do a little butter in the pan with some garlic. And um, the recipe that I found doesn't call for lemon juice, but I always like to add just a tad bit of lemon juice. So that's what we're doing. All right, Teresa, what are we doing first? First, you're gonna take your pan, put some oil in it. That's gonna keep your fish from sticking to the pan. I like to line it with foil so I can take it all out and throw it in the garbage when I'm done. Uh, then you're gonna take and put your red snapper fillets in there, like so. Just lay them in there on top of the oil. I'm only gonna do a little bit because it's just two of us eating tonight, so. Then we're gonna prep the butter garlic sauce that we're gonna brush over those fillets and then stick it in the oven to bake. All right, Teresa, what's the next step? So you put the four tablespoons of butter into the pan here. I've been cooking a long time, so I know what four tablespoons of butter looks like. Measure it if you want to. If not, just eyeball it. This is going to be what you brush over the, uh, the fish before you throw it in the oven to bake. So it calls for about a teaspoon of garlic. That's about a teaspoon. And you're gonna cook this for two minutes. All right, a few drops of Worcestershire sauce here. One, two, three, four, yeah, that's about right. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do some Creole seasoning, just a little bit, because we don't like a lot. And some fresh parsley. This is straight out of the garden, so I know it's fresh. It just... didn't come out Zatarain's out of the garden. No, I reuse. <laughs> I reuse, you know. She reuses, folks. Yeah, I reuse. She doesn't have a Zatarain factory in the garden. No, I sure don't, unfortunately. I'd like one. So, and then we're going to cook that on medium high. We're going to cook it down for two minutes. Two minutes. Mmm, it smells good already. I think I'm going to add a, la a dash of lemon juice to it, you know? There we go. A bit of lemon juice. All right. The lemon juice never hurt nobody. No, helps get that fish, helps it taste better. So this is snapper we caught offshore with Captain Kenny at Bent Rods uh, over there in Grand Isle. Um, so let's kick into some after the episode stuff here, honey. All right. Give them some info. Well, this is different. We're kind of doing a combo of uh, after the episode and cooking, right? Yeah, because, you know, we were out on an offshore boat, so we didn't really take our rods. We didn't have our gear. We used theirs. But there were some things that we were doing out there that you could tell them about, right? Now, the first thing we did was we stopped at a shrimp boat that was trawling, mm -hmm. and we caught, we were trying to catch bonita mm -hmm. yeah. for bait, right? Mm-hmm. Fabio hooked up on a shark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was something else. Uh, Captain Kenny had nicknames for all the boys. Right Fabio, right. Vampire, Indiana Jones, Harry Potter. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they all had nicknames. They all had a nickname, right? And then I ended up with uh, Bill Dance, as y'all saw. Got yeah. a little emotional. Over there. Yeah, yeah. That's what my daddy called me when we went fishing. So the mangrove, he kept telling us to drop down, I don't know, 50 or 60 20 seconds. Counts. 20, 20 counts. counts on the mangrove. For mangrove. Apparently counts. the mangroves are higher than the snapper. Mm -hmm. For some reason I kept catching big snapper and he kept throwing them back. I think Ty can't count. They said it wasn't. <laughs> I swear I was doing 60 or whatever. You were doing 60 and you were supposed to be doing 25. Oh, is that what it was? Yes. Well, there you go. That's why I was catching all the snapper. He kept throwing them back, and they were huge, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Well, we were targeting He said, there's, there's time for big snapper yeah. later. Just We're going to let these go. Mm -hmm. These aren't quite big enough. We're going to get bigger, So, yeah. which was hard to imagine. But this is South Louisiana oil rig fishing, so you never know. It's it's like Jurassic Park. Yeah. So, um, and we were allowed to keep how many? Um, on the mangrove, it mangrove. was 10 per person. 10 yeah, per person. there were six of us on the boat. And these suckers were averaging 6 to 10 pounds for They're the big huge. ones. huge. They were monstrous. Yeah. But everything out there is big, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Bermuda chub I'm used to seeing about this long, those were like 
three, four pounds a piece to Bermuda Chub. Yeah. Uh, the fish that come up to the boat every time we pull up. Last time we were in Venice offshore at the rigs, we were catching 75 pound, 100 pound yellowfin tuna. They said the marlin were chasing the tuna the week before under the boat. I mean, it is, it is some epic offshore as much as the inshore bite is on in South Louisiana. All offshore is just as amazing. So the gaff hook, they had an interesting gaff hook. Mm -hmm. it's, we're it's, always using the spear gaff. We always use a spear gaff. Mm -hmm. But it's funny that they were doing this because years ago when I was running a boat, I took a piece of PVC, PVC pipe and put a shark hook on it, and I guess it's the same Kunas ingenuity. And I saw they were doing the same thing, and it tripped me out. And it reminded me of how handy that thing is. And in the video, you can see them flipping fish off. You can see them uh, venting the, the snapper, psh, popping their air bladder. And they said that, that the hook point pops the air bladder much finer than the injector that they use that you buy um, because it's, it's a lot fatter needle. So they liked it for that too. And then they were using it to just generally gaff fish, lip gaff them and let them go. So I, I went ahead and made a couple of them because they are super handy and universal too, especially for flipping fish off like hard heads. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's brush this uh, onto the fillets real quick because it's ready. So we're gonna brush the fillets with the uh, butter sauce here. Look at that. Ooh, look at that. That looks pretty. Mm-hmm. This is a garlic butter sauce. Mmm, that's gonna be good. And then you're supposed to turn them over and do the other side. So let me flip them over here. Do the other side. Real quick like. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to eat tonight. I'm gonna put some of that parsley in there. Oh, that looks good. Mmm. Okay. So now we're gonna put the pan back on and do a little bit of breadcrumbs and Parmesan. So we're making the breadcrumb mixture here uh, with the remaining butter sauce and it's getting, you know, thick and crunchy there. Look at that. Mm. So that we're gonna put on the fillets and then bake it. We've already got our... Yum. Oh, that looks good, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's put this breadcrumb right on top, right up on top of that fish. It smells so good. It does. Mm. What's in that breadcrumb? It's just bread. It's just breadcrumb and Parmesan with the leftover butter sauce. So. While it's baking, I'm going to put on some uh, broccoli to steam so you can get back to your after the episode. So the limits on the, on the, on the mangroves were 10 a man and the red snapper, the limit was two each. So we ended up with 60. We kept catching mangroves until we had enough and there was six guys, so that was 60 mangroves we were allowed. And Five then, guys, one girl. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> and then we're allowed two snapper each. Because the land is so fertile, the delta, the silt, there's so much shrimp, there's so much nutrients in the soil. It's staggering the amount of fish, and if you've never seen it, it's a bucket list place to go. You got to go to South Louisiana, go to New Orleans, take all the stuff in, take it, uh, you know, all this, all the tourism in, and head south of New Orleans and do some fishing. Trust me, it'll blow your mind. Let's talk a little bit about the LDA Foundation and, and the thing we did at the end there. Well, like I'm all squatting <laughs> to be my size. Christy reached out to us um, from the LDA Foundation and. Um, Carly White's is, is her place, and they wanted us to just come down and, and get a feel for if, you know, it was something we'd want to film, and we just turned on the cameras and started rolling because it's just, you know, what we do. So we caught it all. Uh, they do an amazing thing. They It's open to the public, too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it's open to the public every year. In Anybody July. go? Yep. Um, but they do an amazing thing. They raise all that money, and then they help uh people it's a great foundation that's, that's really neat cause yeah we donated some of ty's art and let him auction it off it was great very very awesome yeah and um, how about the food at that event the food in louisiana is just good all you can stop around. at a gas station in louisiana and have your mind blown and have some of the best yeah. food you've ever had in your life it's cuisine everything you eat is cuisine their plate lunches are cuisine it comes with like eight courses and a piece of chocolate cake <laughs> i mean yeah so what's our next step on the cooking 
Um, we're going to leave that in for 15 minutes, and then the broccoli will be ready, and then we will uh, try some of this delicious red snapper baked in garlic sauce. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. Okay, wait. Ready? Is yeah. it ready yet? Not yet. Is it ready? 15 minutes. 15? 15. 14. Third. No, it doesn't go that quick. That's seconds. <laughs> That's why you couldn't catch the fish, because you can't count. <laughs> oh. That's hardcore. Here goes nothing. You ready? Got hot in that kitchen. All right. Here we go. Mmm. Oh, man. Ooh, that's got some flavor to it. It took on a whole new flavor, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. How'd, how'd you get it so moist? I just baked it. I did the magic touch. Mmm. The baking, the baking truly made a difference. That is so good. It's so good, make you slap your mama. This is a, not a hard dish to do, is it? No, it took 15 minutes. A little bit of prep work, maybe five prep minutes work? prep work. You could probably do this with redfish, speckled trout, just about any type of filet. There was nothing special no, huh? about the, you know, the meat cut. Mm -mm. Of course, snapper or grouper is gonna make it taste awesome, mm -hmm. mahi, but. But you can yeah, definitely do this with a redfish or mm -hmm. or a hybrid striper or, or a piece of it. crappie or it's amazing. Hey, thanks a lot for, for watching folks. Let us know, comment below if you like this combination catch and cook slash after the episode. After the episode. Just mixing things up. Just changing it up. Mm -hmm. Never know what you're gonna get. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time right here on 30 Miles Out. What? Yeah. Let's see. Bon appetit. Yeah. <laughs>